Friends, Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now we'll sing as our ushers come through the, uh, the aisles. Uh, let us break bread together. We'll be standing for right now, though. Preparing for Holy Communion, let's uh, wish one another the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you, also with you. Old Testament lesson this morning from Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the first 14 verses. Some ways is a parallel story to, uh, Stan, I think you read the Old Testament last week from the 21st uh, chapter. Uh, 
with the uh, Abraham and Hagar and Ishmael uh, today, uh, Abraham and Isaac. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. And God said, take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. And then Abraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father, Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. He said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
the children come forward, I have something to share with you today. Come on! Come on! Oh, and I need my order. Oh, Russia. Friends, we have something very, very special today. And Miss Vila is going to join me. Little ones, this is a library box. Exactly right. We are going to, have you seen a library box before? Yeah, I went to a library. You went to a library? This is a library. I went to a library a bunch of times. A bunch of times. Well, this is a. Hey, I went to the soccer game and see the, see the, the soccer game, game is next to the library. This is a, here, gentle fingers, yeah. just sit right there. I, 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 I,
Yeah, you did go on an <coughs> elevator, but everybody, let's <gasps> hold. I gotta tell you something really special. <laughs> this, <laughs> yes, this is a library box that goes outside. Yeah. And two years ago, Miss Vila, Miss Vila said we were saying, what does the church want to do? Yeah. Yeah, how do we want to help people? How do we want to love on them? Let them know that we love them and that God loves them. And, yeah. and Miss Vila said, I would love for a library box. Yeah. And, and we prayed. <laughs> and we prayed and we prayed. And then this spring, Miss Vila was in a room with people. And students at Colonial Heights High School built this library box. And they said, we need a home for it. And Miss Vila, because she'd been praying, and because she had talked to God and God had talked to her, she said, I know who wants a library box, my church family. And this is our library box now, and we're going to put it outside. So that means when we put a book in, somebody can come take a book out or put a book in for their neighbor. And so if anyone brought a book today for the library box, let's go on and put them in before we bless. Oh, birthday boy, good job. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. You are the birthday boy. Pastor Suzanne's going to lift. We do. Oh, thank you, Clara. Any other? Is What is that, the Hobbit? Oh, oh of course it's Tolkien. We're going to bring books. We're going to bring books. We're going to bring books in. Hold up. We got a few more to put in. Uh, Arthur. Yes. Thank you, Diane. We've got we got more books. Let's see. Oh, Sesame Street. Thank you, Vicky. Let's see. Oh. I went on a roller coaster with my dad on Sesame Street. That's awesome. Any more books? All right, so we're going to close the book box. All right. At the when All I right, wrote. friends, I want you to come and put hands on this cart. Put your hands because we're going to bless this box. A blessing is from God. And adults, I want you to put your hands out. We're going to be praying over this box. So, dear friends, this library box which by the favor of God and human labor has been so far completed, it embodies the obligation of each generation to impart its treasures of wisdom and knowledge to the generation following. For the fulfillment of this task, we need not only the best that we can do, but above all the blessing of Almighty God. Let us therefore bring praise to God's aid in this undertaking, giving thanks for those who, by their gifts of service, shall unite in fulfilling the purpose for which our new library box is prepared. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would continue to guide us, that in the ways you call us to love our neighbor and to love you, that you would create opportunities, that you would open our eyes and our ears and our hands to those wonderful moments, that we can be you in the world. Amen. Can y'all say amen? Amen. amen? amen. Wonderful job, Highland. I hope that you see when we're open to serving our neighbors and serving God, God creates opportunities, and we can say amen to that. All right, friends, we are going to go to children's church and to nursery. We thank you, all of our, um, our helpers today, Vila and Jen and Stephanie. Thank you so much. I'll have a good time. And Randy, my friend, if you would, waiting for the herd. That's wise. Yes, that's wise.
Ooh, I'm all over the map today. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from the gospel of Matthew. We are in chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to God in prayer once more. (coughs) Heavenly Father, we pray that the things that bind us, for the distractions, the hurts, the places that need justice and reconciliation, Lord, but we are waiting upon it. Father God, we ask that you would help us to lay those aside now so that we could be present with you in heart and spirit. We pray for our church, for the ones that God raises up to serve and lead the way, for the ones that we are called to serve, and for the helpers on the way. We pray for our nation, Lord, for the things that bind us together, and healing, Lord, for the things that tear us down. Now I invite you to pray for me and with me that may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, that all that we do, all that we say and sing and proclaim and celebrate would be to the glory of you and you alone. Amen. I love a good murder mystery. I will also be honest in saying I have yet to solve a murder mystery. It's a running joke with my big kids. I've read almost all of Agatha Christie and Hercule Poirot, and I I aspire to be a Miss Marple when I grow up, the little old town lady who knows everybody's business, who solves murders before, you know, the investigators can. I aspire to that, but I consistently cannot ever solve the case. Now, I can tell my husband the plot, and he'll tell me who did it, and it is very infuriating because nine times out of ten he is correct. But I have run low on Agatha. Run low. There's only so many rich people in manors in England that can be murdered by uh, nail pins and poison and betrayal. You you run low. And recently I've been reading uh, a woman called Helen Turston, I'm not advocating this writing. I'm just saying it's a person. And she is a Swedish writer. And at the beginning, it says it's translated by so-and-so. Each book is translated by so-and-so. It takes a good three weeks on Amazon to get to me. It feels like the 1990s again. It's like I have to wait to know what happens. But it's interesting reading a book written in a different country that I have no concept of, never visited, don't know the language, don't know the menu. There are times where it seems very normal and then they're eating a lot of herring, a lot of herring for Swedish people. And there are uh, different districts she names and different types of cars and, and uh, the police officers, officers don't have guns and I'm like, and they always mentioned if it were America, you know, they're always talking about us, it's fascinating. And as she talks about the weird food and the, and the weird holidays, and I try to play along, sometimes I just nod and pretend I know what she's talking about and hurry on to figure out who did it. Any of y'all do that? Well, the Bible is an often, it's a lot like that. You see, the Bible as we know it, and I'm going to tell you something you know, it wasn't written in English. 
If you approach it from the mindset of that somebody would deliver the Bible to you and at the, from Amazon and they said at the beginning, translated by so-and-so, and you can order a different Bible and it'll say translated by so-and-so, and you can order a different version and they've got different wordings and you can line them all up. And there are some people who make careers out of battling the text together, do they not? There are times where we read the Bible and things seem weird. It might not be herring but they're eating unleavened bread. They're celebrating the festival of booths, and we go, right? They're walking, they said, dust the sand off of your sandals. When you leave a place, you think, ugh, we're American. We don't like touching each other's feet, right? Now, here's the thing. Our text today is problematic. When we look at the Old Testament, Anytime I have spoken with an agnostic or an atheist, or I've read on the internet the scores of people who have problem with Christianity, the story of Abraham sacrificing his son comes up. More often than not, you hear, how could a God require somebody to kill his only son? How could a God test this man? How could a God scare him? How could a God scare this child? How could a God promise children and then say, throw it all away? Now, on the other hand, a well-read atheist makes good points. A less well-read Christian doesn't always make the best points either. Last week, we read about Abraham Abraham, who does not only have one son, does he? Who's his other son? Ishmael. And last week we read of a son named Ishmael who was not promised by God. See, God came down and, and, and said, you will have children, and it took too long. Abraham took it into his own hands, did it not? It took too long. He took another wife. He had another son before God's blessing came. And then in the brokenness of people, in the jealousy of people, and the hurt, Hagar and Ishmael are sent out to die. I was a, a youth director for a local United Methodist church, and we were in a coffee shop because that's what preteens need, Starbucks. <laughs> and we're sitting there, and we're talking about this text. Because these children are saying, why would God kill us? Why would God let bad things happen? Why are children hurt? Why are women raped? Why why are, are black men gunned down? Why are people sick? Why does cancer exist? Why are we so hurt and disappointed? And they bring this text up, and I say, oh, Isaac's not the only one. There was an Ishmael. And in human brokenness, not the brokenness of God, in human brokenness, Ishmael and his mother are driven out, but it, it's okay because God met them there. Hagar says, you are the God who sees me. She is a woman in the Old Testament who names God. You are the God who sees me. Despite human brokenness, you see me and you provide And as I'm telling them this story, I said, we're Abrahamic traditions. We're all related. The Christians, Judaism, Islam. As I'm saying this, a man in a cowboy hat, nothing against cowboy hats. I love Yellowstone. Not saying you should watch that either. But a man in a cowboy hat, he starts. (laughs) And I think. It's Starbucks. It's $5 a cup. That's what the man's mad about, right? (laughs) And they're like, oh, really? We're all, like, from Abraham? Oh, yeah. And isn't it amazing that Abraham messed up? Abraham didn't just mess up once. I didn't tell them all the times Abraham messed up because sometimes as an adult, you don't want to show kids how many times we mess up. But Abraham messed up, messed up, messed up, messed up, and God meets him. God blesses him. Abraham misunderstands. Abraham is trying to be God. And God says, you are not God. I am God. 
and he still loves them, and he meets them there. He throws away a son, and God wraps that son up, and the cowboy man strode on up, and he said some pretty harsh, indelicate words to me in front of those children, that I was teaching the devil because Islam deserved to die, and for me to suggest that God would care about them was not biblically accurate. Now, there have been many a time people have spoken harshly, and I'm sure many a time I've spoken back pretty harshly. But in front of children really got at me. Because the children had a good point. Why would God ask Abraham to be afraid? Why would God make that child afraid? And this man is saying, God hates But the word of God says, God loves. God loves even in our brokenness. When we turn people away, when people make horrible decisions, when when (laughs) denominations decide that the polity is higher than the love of God, when when we as a nation decide that, you know, we hold all the cards of the future as if God is not the ruler of the kingdom and we are not, as if a global world with all the technology at our hands, we assume that anything to come and anything that will happen is always in our control. And if we could just have enough money, if we could just control enough land, if we could just do enough, if we could just have our corporations enough, And God comes down to Abraham and says, Abraham, Abraham. And here's what our response is supposed to be. Even when we throw out people, even when we decide that we don't think they're good enough, even even when we decide that our translation of the Bible is better than their translation of the Bible, even when we decide to frighten children, even when in our brokenness we believe that God hates and that God is a wrathful God, even though he shows us time and time again, our response should always be, here I am. It's the pause. In the chaos, it's the pause. In the fight, it's the pause. In the throwing out, in the deciding who's in and who's out, what do they owe us? It's the pause of you are God and I am not. In Matthew, I love the Gospel of Matthew because Jesus consistently runs up against experts in the text. I'm sure there was one or two cowboys in Jerusalem that saddled on up and said, oh, son of God, you're wrong. And that's, you know, he handled it with humor and grace, did he not? This text of Matthew, it comes after Jesus names the twelve. He sends them out with nothing, nothing. Remember, like lambs to the wolves. Pastor Joe preached last week that God said, I will be with you. I will provide for you. The brokenness of people might turn away the love of God. And that's not for you to fix. That's for God to fix. And he can and he is able And at the end of this, this is when Jesus is speaking, he says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, welcomes Jesus. And whoever welcomes Jesus welcomes God who sent them. Now, let's not get twisted again. Abraham playing God, it's so easy to play God. Sometimes it's easy to read this and say, whoever welcomes me, Whoever is nice to me is nice to God. If you're not nice to me, you're not nice to God. Wouldn't that be nice if that's what it meant? Maybe when a cowboy comes around, it'd be nice. But what if we flipped it, friends? What if when we encounter the other and we greet them with peace 
and grace. We acknowledge the God and the love and the light and the breath of our creator inside of them. What happens when we move from doing missions where we do things for people because we have it and they don't to doing it the way God asks us to. We are building up the kingdom of God with all of God's creation. Now, I know having a pastor tell you to read your Bible gets old, does it not? But friends, there are some very well-read atheists who, just like me reading a Swedish novel, not knowing why they keep eating herring and fish eggs and why every meal apparently has a beer and apparently the sun doesn't go down for part of the year, just like those people, they're reading a text that's thousands of years old, and they don't know that there were people sacrificing children in Abraham's time, in Jesus' time. And our God said no. There were gods that required imprisonment, required slavery, and our God said no. I'm going to bring you up out of slavery. There were gods that hurt women that didn't meet them in the nowhere, that threw out children, that didn't see the value, didn't breathe love and life into all of them, but that's not who our God is. So I invite you, how will you welcome God this week? So easy to play God. So easy to put that pressure on ourselves. To have it all. How will you pause and say, Here I am, Lord? And how will you welcome the stranger who God is already with? Amen. At this time, friends, I invite you to stand as you are able as we join in the great thanksgiving as we prepare for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You may be seated. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. 
Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We invite you to come now to the Lord's table, all who will follow the direction of the ushers.
Our hymn is The Spirit Sends Us Forth to Serve. That seems like a good hymn to sing. Let's stand, please, and let that be a dismissal. Receive these words of blessings. The Gospel of Matthew has Jesus repeatedly saying that God does not require sacrifice, but he requires compassion. May we never be too big or too knowledgeable to realize that we have not fully understood our loving and compassionate God. May we seek to pause and say, here I am, Lord. And may we go out and tell others of our merciful, compassionate, and loving God. Amen. Have a wonderful week.